Well, kids, the best hour every single week in wrestling has descended upon us once again. That's right. NXT. It's time to get into it in all of its glory right here on Dead on Dave Productions. Let's do this thing. Or let's just go to the intro. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Dead on Dave and I am woefully sorry for let's do this thing. I don't know what the hell that was, but it's okay because you're here with me and it's time to do yo NXT review. That's right. And as you know, I haven't watched NXT yet. I'm about to watch it right now and give you my segment by segment, match by match breakdown and analysis if you give a shit what my analysis is basically i'm not going to analyze anything i'm going to tell you what i liked and what i don't like it's real that simple it's real that simple yeah fuck it let's do it man we got nxt it's a rainy horrible german morning uh it looks like it's been raining well it has been raining for the last week here in germany and it looks like it's going to rain for the next year it's very depressing. In fact, I don't think the weather service has ever gone that far, but they, they can tell it's never going to stop raining here. And basically, I'm in hell. If I wanted to live in Washington, I'd live in fucking Washington. Oh, my God. Rain. Stop. Stop it, rain. But that's okay. You don't want to hear about my rain. You want to hear about NXT. So let's do some NXT, yeah, let's do it, man. It's going to be great. I think there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen in this episode, so no more gilding Lily. Let's get into it. Next time you hear from me, there'll be a time in front of it, and then we're going to get this thing going because that's how long I was watching when I stopped to do a segment. That's the rules here. So I don't know why I just decided to explain it. All right, here we go. Eight minutes in, and we got our first segment of the night finished and it was a uh, Tyler Breeze opening the show, which he's done a lot of lately. And I got to say, I like because he's Adam, not Adam Rose. I'm sorry. Tyler Breeze, Tyler Breeze opened the show. Did I say Adam Rose? It's because I was so enamored and confused and weirded out. Not enamored. I was just, I don't know. Adam Rose has got me all conflubbered. Yes. Conflubbered because we heard about his new character and it's here and it's on NXT and it's, Potsy Poopa Autumn Rose. And he talks about pooping on people's parties, and it's just awful. And <laughs> it's horrible. And he's taken on a heel, but yet he is a heel. I like the fact that, by the way, <coughs> I almost died. I like the fact that NXT will go and go heel versus heel. WWE doesn't like to do it very often anymore, it seems. But NXT doesn't seem to have a problem with it. We were going to get it. We didn't get it. And that's okay because Bull Dempsey comes and interrupts the proceedings. Now, while he is getting well over with this small crowd in NXT, I don't think Bull's ever going to be uh, able to transition and translate that to the bigger stage. I could be wrong. I hope I'm. I, I actually hope I am because I like Bull. I like. I didn't like where he was going before, but I like that he showed range, and that now we're seeing a little bit more of his personality. I like that. That's really good because he's not terrible in the ring. He's just kind of a throwback. But he needed a better character. He needed a better gimmick, and they seem to have gotten it now. So, and I like the fact that they're kind of poking fun of themselves because everybody has a fitness program now, and Bull is fat. And he has bull fit. I think that's hysterical. I really do. Uh, so as for the segment, Adam Rose will not get out of the ring. Uh, bull wants a match with Breeze. They have a really bad promo back and forth. <laughs> Breeze and Bull. Uh, you wish it was an accident. Oh, and something else was an accident. The day that you were born. Eh, it's just kind of weird. And then Adam wouldn't get out of the thing. And then Adam talks about pooping on Bull's party. Then Bull beats him up. And then Tyler Breeze tries to get up on Bull. Bull throws him out of the ring. So yeah, it's a whole big thing. 
So not a lot happened there, but you know, it's setting up a future match with Breeze and Bull. Bull Breeze, Breeze Bull. So I don't know what you guys think of that segment. I thought it was okay. It was a decent start to the show. Uh, I would have liked high octane wrestling, but yeah, I'll take what I can get sometimes. And at least it wasn't a bad opening promo, and that's important. So there you go. Let's get back to the auction and see what's next on NXT, shall we? About 15 minutes in first, we get a little Tyler Breeze accepting the challenge of Bull Dempsey for next week, of course, on social media, because that's how Tyler Breeze rolls. And then we've got the perfect 10. Ty Dillinger against Danny Birch. And it was a pretty de decent match. Uh, a very workmanlike match. Uh, let's, it's, it's designed to build Ty, uh, Ty Dillinger. It's designed to get him over with the crowd. It's designed to, to showcase the 10 gimmick. And it did all of those things rather effectively, I should say. So I thought it was well done. I love that finisher of Ty where he exposes the knee, his own knee, and then drives it into the chin of the guy with like a, a really quick burst, like a code breaker, but only one knee. And it's just very abrupt and brutal looking. It looks good. I like it. Something I haven't seen a lot of. So that's cool. So that was good. It was effective. And that's the important thing. So Tyler Bree, Ty, God, Ty Dillinger uh, did some very good stuff there. And I like Ty quite a bit. I think he's got some potential. And he his popularity is growing. It's getting bigger and bigger. So I think they have something in Ty Dillinger. They just need, And it's the same thing with Jason Jordan. It's kind of funny. These guys were a team. They split up. And now they're both kind of on the rise. Jason Jordan has gone back to the tag team division. But you can certainly see there's something there, and it's the same thing with Ty Dillinger. So, pretty cool. Let's uh, check out what's next. Hey, by the way, you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs listening to the fat man ramble on. Go ahead and hit the like button, because likes are free. And also, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, go ahead and elbow drop that like button. Love that like button. Do it. Yeah. And uh, go ahead and check out some copious gear over at www.deadondave.spreadshirt.com. You can go get your copious gear. You can drink from my face. You can wear my face. You can get the copious club shirt, which I'm going to get a sweatshirt of eventually because it's badass. And it's on the site, all designed by Isaac Rojas. So go check that out. And if you do, take a picture of it, of you wearing it, of you using it, and send it to me on Twitter, at DeadOnDaveV. You can also go right to the description box of this. Donate to the channel if you so see fit ah, to give the fat man a tip. Swallow a burp. That's what happened there. There you go. Uh, let's get back to NXT and see what's next, shall we? 16 minutes and 30 seconds in, and we got a promo, a backstage interview with Rhino and Baron Corbin. That was the most interesting I have found Baron Corbin yet. That little blurb that he did with Rhino. That was awesome. That was awesome. That's all they got to do. Simple, effective. He's not a terrible talker. He has a good tone to his voice. He, you know, really snappy with his delivery. They just needed to, get, to keep it short, sweet, and he did that. I like this pairing of Rhino and Baron Corbin, and honestly... I didn't think I would, but I think Rhino's helping him get that attitude and get some of that presence going. Having these two ride together, train together, whatever they're doing, I think it is it does go deeper than just having them on on character on screen characters together. I think they are like, hey, Rhino, teach this guy. You know, hopefully something will rub off on him. And I think it's working. I, I do like this pairing. I think they're doing a good job. But you know what? I got a feeling they have a chance to win this whole damn thing. Now they got to get through Gargano and Ciampa tonight, which is no easy feat because. If you're indie uh, fans, you know how good they are, and they were very impressive last week. But this is certainly a step up in competition. Last last week it was Bull Dempsey and Tyler Breeze. Great individual guys, you know, uh, but not a team. These two, uh, Rhino and Baron Corbin, however, that's a team. It's going to be very different, uh, and it should be good. And these two have gelled very quickly together, too, which is something else I like. And they say it's because it's built on respect because they went to war. Sometimes that's the best way. So let's see how that goes and see this match. It should be pretty good. I believe that'll be later on. But for now, let's see what is up next on NXT because Lord knows I'm itching 
for a good fight. Can I get a good fight? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your hands on the screen, okay? I want everybody who believes in the soul and the spirit of wrestling. Here's what I need you to do, brothers and sisters. I need you to take your hands and put them on the screen. And I need you to project your energy, your energy to NXT and say, NXT, give the fat man what he wants. Give the fat man a match that he wants and help me oh lord help me keep my accents and impressions together can i get an amen hey, hallelujah thank you thank you brothers and sisters mm -hmm. yep all right and next NXT, uh, let's see what's next. <laughs> wow. 17 minutes, 10 seconds in, and a promo for Kana, or should I say Asuka, for next week. She will be debuting next week on NXT. Man, they put that together really quickly. Obviously, they know she doesn't need a lot of time in developmental down at the Performance Center. She needs to be wrestling immediately, and it looks like they're not going to waste any time. I love that little vignette, man. She looks smoking good. God, she's sexy. I like her face, man. Her body is very athletic. I like that, but it's her face. She just looks sultry, man. I love it. I love it. She was looking good right there. I love the willingness, man. It seemed like there was some hesitation by some top-level indie performers, both male and female, to come over. But I think the more legitimate that NXT has gotten the more that they have attracted these great performers. Asuka is a game changer, folks. If you don't know her, you're going to know her real soon. She's a game changer. Just like the next guy looks like he's coming out for a match, Apollo Crews. Let's see. Hopefully, we're going to get a little bit of a... Uh, we're going to see a little bit more out of Apollo Crews. Hopefully, they'll open him up a little bit and we'll get to see a little bit more of his move set. Uh, let's see what they do. Here we go. Apollo Crews Next. On NXT. I don't know why I'm doing that. Uh, but I do. Don't. Just go with it. Here we go. Let's check it out. 24 minutes and 30 seconds in. And as, and as I said, Apollo Crews having a match against Solomon Crow, A very different looking Solomon Crow. I'm not talking about his gimmick. I'm talking about his physique. He looks like he's dropped about 20 pounds lately. He looks like he's in the best shape since he came over to NXT. Now, this is an interesting matchup just for the fact that Solomon Crow was Apollo Crews just a few short months ago. When Solomon came in, there was all this hype around him, then it quickly dissipated. Everybody just collectively didn't give a shit, unfortunately. It was because Crow is very weird, very bizarre in, in the way he wrestles, and sometimes it can come off very sloppy. And I don't think it translates well to, to crowds. I mean, and I don't know if it comes well on TV either. And that might not be fair because I think Solomon Crow is actually a really talented guy. But I think that he's just in a hard luck situation. He, but if he puts on performances like he did today with Solomon Crow, Solomon Cruz, excuse me, Apollo Cruz, uh, and he's going to do just fine. This was a really good match. There was good storytelling. Apollo Crews does what a lot of people don't do, and that's sell. He sells to his opponent, and really, and you believe that he is actually in some pain here, and he, he's he's wearing down, and then he hits that rejuvenation stage, which is really cool, and he just turns it up to a new level. Uh, Apollo gets to win with that very impressive standing moonsault, but take nothing away from Solomon Crow. Yes, it's another loss, but it's a quality loss if there is such a thing. I think he did a lot for his stock. Uh, the crowd really seemed to be into him towards the middle of the match. There was one point where Solomon uh, caught Apollo as Apollo was trying to baseball slide out of the ring. He, he put the uh, apron over and started beating him relentlessly, and that was really cool. Uh, it was a nice spot. So a lot of fun there. I enjoyed that match quite a bit, probably more than I thought I was going to because I'm not a big Crow guy right now because of the reasons I said earlier with things that he's doing. But – what he's doing right now it's changing my mind and apollo cruz did what i wanted him to do he uh stretched out a little bit more showed a little bit more of himself they told a really good story so i'm really happy with that match best match so far tonight most complete good match a lot of fun let's see what's next here we go 
<laughs> okay, all right. 26.37. Oh, my God. I'm going to get to what made me laugh in a second. First off, <laughs> yay. Okay. Tommaso Chava and uh, Johnny Gargano with a really good promo talking about how they are not here by accident and they're they're going to, you know, they're going to win this Dusty Rhodes Classic. And they convinced me. I like them both. They're, and they both uh, showed some good mic skills there. And we know what they can do in the ring. So that's great. But what cracked me up, okay, Emma and Dana Brooke doing an interview right after that one, but with Devin, and who, man, she looks like she's a party girl. I'm just saying. Just looks like party girl. She's really short and spunky. I like her. Uh, she looks weird sometimes, though. I don't know. Anyway, so the promo was mainly bad. Uh, Dana kind of stumbled over some of her words. She just talks weird. I'm starting to understand. She just talks like this. And you know, Devin, when we shake things up, they will never be the same again. Because I am Dana Brooke. And I am the tonal diva. That all sucked. You know, what she did was not great. But the head pat thing, which I thought has gotten old, uh, she does it again. Emma laughs. And then they go back to Devin's show her again. And Dana comes back in and goes, tap to the tap. Ura, 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 remix. Rock on. I love that, Dave. That was great. That was the best thing Dana Brooke has done. The best thing she's done because she entertained me for the first time. For the first time, I was... Thoroughly entertained. Thoroughly entertained with that. Do that. A, 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 a remix. A rock on. <laughs> that was great. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that. All right. So let's uh, let's get back to it, man. That was interesting. Let's see what's next on NXT. <laughs> rock on. 27 minutes in and Sasha Banks, the boss, rolling up in her very expensive luxury car. Escalade, I believe. I couldn't remember the name. Uh, yeah. Why is she here? Dead on Dave asks like he doesn't already know about the 30-minute Iron Maiden match. Like, I don't know about it already. I don't. I'm surprised. I am thoroughly confused at why she's here. Hopefully... She doesn't interrupt anybody and make some crazy type of challenge for NXT TakeOver like a 30-minute Iron Maiden championship match with Bailey. That might happen. Just saying. Let's see what's next. Here we go. It's almost 30 minutes in and we got a weird little thing here. A guy we've never really seen before, this Kyle Edwards reporting from Stanford, Connecticut. Really well-spoken well guy. This dude's going to be an announcer, man. He sounded really good. I actually liked listening to him. Very, very good announcer. I enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully, he'll be on a team. Maybe we'll see him on NXT very soon. But he recapped the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, and he talked about the Lucha Dragons losing. Then he talked about the Hype Brothers moving on. And then they showed just a highlight package from Blake and Murphy taking on the Vaude Villains, which... Apparently, we're not getting that match. We're not going to see that rematch. We're not going to see that first round match. Holy crap. No, they just gave us a recap because it was in that tiny little arena, uh, basically a basement, whatever you want to call it, and the Vaude Villains get the victory. But shouldn't we have seen that match? That's a little weird to me. But still, decent little segment. Now we're getting the first, second round matchup of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Rhino and Corbin versus Gargano and Ciampa. And I am champion on the bit. Ch chomping. Chomping. God, I'm terrible. Chomping, I'm... You know what I mean? I'm excited for this shit. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. 36 minutes and 42 seconds in. Now, we are having a great match between Tommaso Ciampa and Gargano versus damn uh, Corbin and Rhino. It's a great match so far, man. I'm really enjoying it. Ciampa is a freaking little beast for the size of he is, man. I, I, he's a little psycho, just like his name. I love the guy. And he, he is quite impressive 
and him and Gargano are hitting some amazing moves. It's really entertaining. But that's not what this little update is about. No, no, no. This update is about the promo that we just got, the commercial in the middle of the NXT program this week, and that is Table for Three. Now, I wanted to talk about it for a second because I love this show. I love the concept. I love the execution. The whole I, Now, if it's true, and based off what the New Day did in, in the first episode, I'm going to assume it is. It's unscripted. It's unfiltered. It's unedited. Well, I'm sure it's edited for time, but I mean, they just grip it and rip it. They just talk and about whatever they want, and it's very, very interesting. And they gave a little sneak peek at some of the people that are going to be on this. And we saw Mean Gene. We saw Lundra Blaze. We saw Kevin Owens and Cesaro and somebody else that I didn't see sitting at the same table. This is going to be amazing to see these guys talk out of character and just real. This is going to be incredible. I cannot friggin' wait. I, this is a can't-miss show for me. Table for Three is a brilliant idea. Brilliant and it's once again, it's WWE continuing with something that I've been saying for a long time it's in what I've been enjoying. Whether it be Total Divas, whether it be that to a lesser extent, whether it be Up, Up, Down, Down, whether it be any of these things where we're getting, uh, even Swerved, Swerved, the same thing. We're getting to see wrestlers in a different way. We're getting to see them who they really are. And that is fucking fascinating. It's so fascinating. I love it. I absolutely love it. So hopefully you guys are checking out Table for Three. It's great. It's really, really good. So, all right, let's uh, get back to this tag team match, which is friggin' amazing on its own. This is match of the night already in my book uh, because I see where it's going. Great match. So let's get back to it. About 42 minutes in, and we got the ending to this amazingly good match. Ciampa and Gargano lose fall to Rhino and and Corbin in spectacular fashion. We got a great ending. I love this match, man. This was great. Very well done. Baron Corbin, really good tonight. Really the best version of Baron Corbin that I've seen. Uh, this has been a great night so far, mainly because I saw the best version of Baron Corbin that I've seen. I've seen the most entertaining moment out of Dana Brooke. We saw the best version of Solomon Crow. This is great, man. This is the, the everybody's taking next steps. People are coming in. People are coming back. We've got amazing things going on. This is a really, really good night. And if you haven't really seen the things that I'm saying, like, oh, I don't really understand. What Go back and watch the night again and tr just look for these things that are just kind of elevating the show. It's pretty damn fascinating what's happening. Great, great night of wrestling and entertainment all together. So, and we still got. 18 minutes of show left. So let's see what's left to see. I hope it's not 18 minutes of promo work from Bailey and Banks. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love both of them, but 18 minutes is a lot of time to fill. So let's see what's going to happen now on XT. Let's see what these last 18 minutes hold. 43 minutes in, really good backstage interview with the Vaude Villains talking about how they're going to take on Wilder and Dash here very soon. In the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. But Alexa Bliss interrupts with her boys Blake and Murphy. And announces that they are getting their tag team rematch. For their championship rematch I should say. Jesus. Next week on NXT. So that's going to be really good. Uh, <laughs> the Vaude Villains using the word indubitably. And Blake and Murphy tries to use the same thing. And they can't say the word. So they just say. Idiots. It's pretty funny. A uh, really good segment. I want to see this match again. I'm sure Blue Pants were getting, will get involved once again. Because uh, they have nothing else to do. You know, uh, they, they don't, seemingly don't want to bring another diva into this situation. Which they probably should since Blue Pants isn't actually working for the company. She just, from her own words, they just call her, tell her when they want her to be there and she shows up. She doesn't have to do the NXT training. None of that. She just shows up. When they want to pop, I guess. And I guess it, there's something to be said for a thing like that. But I don't know. Uh, it's going to cause a little bit of resentment, which we've read that that's already happened. But we don't know how valid that is. So we'll see. 
let's uh, check out what's next on NXT. And it uh, looks like we're getting ready to wrap it up here soon. So hopefully it ends on a high note. Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden? What's an Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden 30 minute? I think. No, no, that's not going to happen. Okay, about 48 minutes in. And Bailey comes out. And look, if you're not smiling at this point in the show, you're not fucking human. You don't have a heart, man. Bailey bringing in her her fan Izzy, who shows up to all the shows dressed exactly like Bailey. It was absolutely adorable. They were panning through the crowd, and they were showing people in the crowd crying. I mean, literally crying because of how cute this was, and how special, and how sweet. Great moment, man. This is and this is what it's about. Izzy is a fan for life, and her children are gonna love wrestler wrestling, you know. And that's that's what this is about, man. It's about passion. It's about love. That's what wrestling really is. Wrestling can be just another sport, but it's not. It's more than that for us. And you know that. I think most if you guys are watching my show, then you know that's a hundred percent true, at least for you. And you know it is for me. Wrestling is about the passion. I, I do this show because I'm passionate about wrestling. Bailey and Izzy together was beautiful, man. I love that moment. Sorry to be a cheese ball, but that was awesome, man. I don't care. I loved it. I loved it. Let's uh Sasha's gonna poop on this though. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, uh, 4920. It looks like Bailey's gonna have a match against this smoking hot. A uh, new girl, Sarah Dobson. Whoa, she's smokingly. Ooh, ooh, I like her. I like her. Man, uh, let's see where this. This will not be a long match, probably. Uh, let's see what Bailey does to this really beautiful woman. Oh man, smoking. All right, let's check it out. Okay, not to interrupt again. Uh, Fifty minutes in, but uh, Sarah Dobson maybe not hot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I may have spoke too soon. She's cute, and she, she has a sexy thing about her, but I'm noticing she doesn't ever close her mouth. I mean, in some cases, that's a really good thing, but uh, this is it's just kind of weirding me out. It's creepy. She's athletic, though, and she seems really tough. I like where the match is starting here. This is pretty good, but uh, Sarah Dobson, I may have overspoke on the uh, hotness thing. I apologize. Apologize for that. But hey, I'm a fair man, and I correct my mistakes. Let's see where this match goes. Well, there it is, kids. End of the show. And after Bailey gets the quick win, relatively quick win over Sarah Dobson, Sasha Banks comes out. Lovely, and the crowd loves it, man. The crowd's totally into it. The, the, I mean, the crowd was really into the night, by the way. And they go back and forth, and they have a really good promo. Sasha does some really good stuff on the mic, says some very, very, very cool shit. But it doesn't matter. None of it matters because the announcement is official. Even though I knew it was coming, even though I it was already announced, I knew it when Regal makes the announcement for a 30-minute Iron Man match, Iron Woman match, Iron Gender Neutral match, Iron Maiden match. I lost it. The people in the crowd lost it. And Sasha Banks and Bailey looked stoked. This is going to be great. They are main eventing the October 7th NXT TakeOver, which is only a few short weeks away. So we're not going to have to wait that long. That's going to be amazing. I'm super excited. How do you guys feel about tonight's episode? I give it an 8. I thought it was really good. I can be talked into an 8.5. Very, very good show, man. A lot of fun. Very well done. Everything was effective. The opening was a little slow, but other than that, man, I felt everything really clicked. We got a lot of good wrestling. We got some returns. We got some debuts. It's great. I'm, I'm stoked, man. We saw best versions of... Of people, which I think is always important to factor in when you're talking about a show. So yeah, man, I, I'm I'm over the moon here. Iron Woman, 30 minute match, can't be more excited. Gonna be great. There it is. Thank you guys for joining me right here on Dead on Dave Productions, man. Check out everything that's going on in the community. Tommy C. Shot from the Point, the most badass hockey podcast in all the known land, and of course. Joe Cronin, the Joe Cronin Show. Make sure you're checking out everything that we do over there at the Joe Cronin Show, man. We got another monetized disc coming up this week. We got 
Monday Night Raw review. We got a pay-per-view review this week. That's right, pay-per-view review. We'll be doing live right after the pay-per-view. Right after Night of Champions, we'll be on Joe Cronin Show and then flip back over here to catch me. And, of course, don't forget, tomorrow we got Touch Em All Baseball with Jeff Huffman and myself. Saturday, Dead on Dave Live, which will be the full prediction show and breakdown of Night of Champions. And then Sunday, football, man, me and Jim Peterson right here breaking down the week that will be pregame NFL 9, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you guys are there for that. It's going to be awesome. going to be awesome. Other than that, that's all I got. Thank you guys very much for joining me right here on Dead on Dave Productions. Like, subscribe, and share. Like and subscribe. Don't forget to do it. Like that damn thing. And we'll see you next time. And as always, if you don't have talent, have talented friends. Keep it copious, mofos. We'll see you next time. Peace.